And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of December 28, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program in this, the last week of 2020, that I think we can all agree and be happy for. Uh, on this week's program, we continue our main leaders conversation series. And in this week's main leaders conversation series, we are going to chat with U.S. Congressman Jared Golden from right here in Maine's 2nd District. We're going to talk about his priorities for 2021, a look back at 2020, and hear what he's working on in the coming Congress. Uh, we'll talk with Representative Golden in just a little bit, but before we do that, we'll get to this week's news and information that you can use as we do each week at the beginning of our broadcast. And we begin by again letting you know that our offices are indeed closed to the public countywide as a result of the spike in cases, um, but we are offering our services remotely. Uh, early care and education facilities, uh, are, many of them are closed this week. Uh, child care services are continuing to be offered uh, through the week, but we certainly are reaching out to parents as, uh, as need be uh, as status changes in different classrooms based upon uh, any uh, concerns about the COVID-19 virus outbreak in specific communities. So we are monitoring that very closely, but we encourage you, especially in our Presque Isle at 771 Main Street facility, as well as in our Holton facility on Military Street, that when you arrive, there's a banner as is indicated in the photo here. And please do contact that number, call that that number and we will be able to serve you remotely. Uh, we have window access in both facilities. Uh, we also have the ability to do curbside service, but we would be happy to help you in that regard. Please do give us a call at either one of those numbers. We also have limited service available in our Fort Kent office uh, as well. We do want to wish you all a happy holiday season. Uh, we had Christmas last week and this year we do have New Year, so our offices will be closed on January 1st, 2021. Again, a calendar turn page there that we're all very happy about. So please, uh, please do reach out to us uh, Monday through Thursday this week. Our offices will be closed again on Friday the 1st to celebrate the new year. We want to thank uh, grocery stores and other pro uh, food uh, pro produce or services uh, throughout Aroostook County for their assistance in our cereal giving tree reimagined with the cancellation of many activities, including the St. Apollonia Festival of Trees. You we weren't able to do that a cereal tree there this year, but many of the um, local grocery stores that have donated for that for us for years uh, continue to do that, including Grave Shop and Save, as well as Parity Shop and Save, both pictured here. We also thank the Ashland Food Mart and Caribou Hannaford, as well as Aroostook Foods uh, for their support of our giving tree, our cereal giving tree reimagined. Uh, these cereal products will be stored in pantries or will be placed in pantries across Aroostook County or little community cupboards uh, and be given to the public in that regard 24-7. Speaking of community cupboards, there is a new one in Aroostook County that's a result of a partnership of the Aroostook County Action Program, United Way of Aroostook, and the Bread of Life Soup Kitchen in Caribou on Collins Street, where this new pantry is located. If you are in need of food assistance in the Caribou area, we certainly encourage you to visit this uh, Caribou Bread of Life uh, Soup Kitchen um, new uh, cabinet. It's right out there at their Collins Street facility. While you are there, there's an Aroostook County Food Resource Guide uh, available inside the cupboard, as well as some of the other cupboards across Aroostook County, including the one here at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle. The community uh, cupboard is not the only thing available at 771 Main Street. We have our community closet that is now expanded to better serve the community. Um, now that we're in the colder months, we have uh, placed a slight shelter out in front of our facility where the clothing uh, can be dropped off. We are in need of clothing right now. The, the racks were particularly empty. Uh, many people uh, got clothing over the weekend and we encourage you to stop by and leave clothes 24 seven in that little area. Uh, just to the left of our main entrance, you'll see the white uh, small enclosed area. Um, please do consider dropping off clothing or if you are in need, please do pick up clothing. Again, it's open 24 seven for drop off or pick up. We also are encouraging our community um, to turn to us if you are in need of face masks. We have free cloth masks available to anyone who needs them. You can access those at our Presque Isle facility right here near Walmart, our Holton Military Street facility, or our Fort Kent uh, facility on the Industrial Park. We have supplies there, um, and we certainly don't want to see people uh, not being able to uh, run their errands or get out in public um, because they don't have a face mask. So if you are in need of a face mask for you or any member of your family, please do reach out to us. Uh, come to those local facilities 
facilities, call the phone number or come to the door where there's a video doorbell and we will get those out to you. Um, they are, of course, free of charge. We also have a number of available resources. We recognize that many families are suffering and we've made it through uh, the first of the holidays, but um, as, as the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic continues to rage and vaccine is starting to get out, uh, we're still very concerned uh, with the, um, the livelihood of folks across Aroostook County. So we have a number of services we've, uh, we've committed to our community throughout this pandemic and provided this resource guide that you can find on our website or on our Facebook presence, uh, please do consider uh, looking at those resources. If you are uncertain of what services you need, please do contact us. We have a navigator available to assist you and your family or your household. Call us at 764-3721 and we'll be happy to connect you with one of our navigators to check in on not only the services we offer that you might be eligible for, but other services available in our community. We are getting ready for our home buyer education classes to resume after a short break in the month of December. We are planning on offering seven courses, uh, seven classes in the uh, 2021 year. Uh, the first one coming up on January 30th. These are an eight hour home buyer education class taught by industry professionals um, in an educational non sales oriented environment. Uh, the course is open to the public. Registration is required. There's a slight fee, but there are many, many benefits uh, for successful completers of the home buyer education program. We do encourage you to contact Greg Doak, who's our certified HomeWorks instructor. For more information or to register, you can call him at 764-3721 or email him directly at gdoak at acap me.org. These classes are all being held virtually uh, and are all on Saturdays uh, throughout 2021. The COVID-19 rent relief program uh, is continuing. We are watching closely the legislation just signed by the president over the weekend as it relates to a new rental assistance program. There were $25 billion um, that were earmarked toward a rental assistance program and we are waiting word on how that will interact or impact the COVID-19 rent relief program that was guaranteed through the end of the month of December. We are working with our friends at Maine Housing and we'll hopefully have more information to you in next week's broadcast of ACAP today or also stay tuned to our Facebook presence as we learn more about what that will mean for the coming months for rental assistance but we do anticipate a continuation of the program in some form uh, into 2021. The Home Energy Assistance Program uh, is conducting all of their appointments virtually as we've shared with you. We really do feel that there are thousands more Rooster County households that could be eligible for this program that helps uh, provide a uh, heating fuel uh, for your home, whatever that fuel may be. Uh, but again, we are working through a, a series of applications. Over uh, 3,200 applications have been processed initially so far this year, and we have appointments scheduled out early into 2021. But we do encourage you to reach out to us because we do have available point, uh, appointments uh, into January, February, and March. And the program does continue all the way through July. And we encourage you to apply it takes approximately 30 days after we receive all documents to certify an application so we want to make sure that we get folks in in this heating season please do give us a call if you have any questions or to schedule an appointment again the income guidelines have changed in the last couple of years and we feel that there are hundreds if not thousands of more county households that are eligible for this program and we encourage you to check out to see if you might be one of them the uh, tobacco programs that we offer here at ACAP include a couple of different programs. So one was established uh, through um, the um, Maine CDC and works with Maine Health here in Aroostook County. Uh, and that is one where we are able to help you protect your employees, employers and employees from the detrimental effects of environmental tobacco smoke. We work with different businesses uh, across Aroostook County and different organizations across Aroostook County to assist in work place policy development, updating workplace policy developments. They're perhaps um, not uh, inclusive of all of the um, additional tobacco products such as vaping and the like. Uh, please do give us a call. This is a free service. And in addition to the service, we can also provide you with free signage such as what is uh, pictured here on your screen. So please, it's worth it if you are running a business organization to make sure you are in compliance and that you have the latest information available to you. Chastity Holland is our person to contact. C. Holland at AK cap-me.org is the best way to get in touch with CHAS. 
We also have a tobacco cessation program. And as we roll into the new year this Friday, this is a great time to be thinking about quitting smoking. Uh, so if you are in need of help and in need of assistance and who isn't, it's a very uh, challenging uh, addictive uh, habit. So we have new year quit kits that will be available here at our 771 Main Street office that are available for pickup uh, through Wednesday, December 30th, uh, excluding obviously last week when we were not, those were not available on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but they are available all week this week until the holiday. Grab one for yourself or give one to a friend. Again, call the number um, on the building and we will get one of those out to you. If you are interested in being supported in your effort to quit, contact Elaine Sipe at 227-2348 or esipe at acap-me.org and we'll be talking with Elaine about her efforts to help people quit in a couple of weeks uh, here on the broadcast when we return out of the main leaders conversation series. And we also want to remind folks of the main workforce collaborative. The local workforce boards have all collaborated to provide free virtual employment workshops and informational sessions to help uh, individuals connect to resources, build job skills, and find and maintain employment. A number of these resources would have otherwise been offered in person, but we're able to offer all of them virtually. There are several topics that you can see there on your screen, and we encourage you to indeed check those out and to get signed up for them if you feel that they could be a benefit to you as we recover economically and employment opportunities come. This is a great time to be thinking about your future and retooling your further career. And we also want to invite folks who are interested in joining our ACAP team. Our ACAP-ME.org website um, has a current program uh, and job offerings. We encourage you to check those out. And if you were interested in joining our ACAP team, just submit an application to us. And with that, that's this week's news and information that you can use for this week of December 28, 2020. And as we noted at the top of this week's webisode of ACAP today, we are joined by U.S. 2nd District Congressman from the state of Maine. He is Congressman Jared Golden, and we welcome you to the broadcast, Congressman Golden. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for doing this and I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to connect uh, with your organization. So this is our main leaders conversation series and the first question that I have for you I think actually takes a bit of a different slant because we've all been talking with our leaders about how uh, overwhelming and, and all of the challenges that we faced in 2020 but in many respects, 2020 for you was a, it was a year with some very good blessings. Congratulations uh, for your win, for your re-election to a second term, but also I think, and more importantly, um, congratulations to you and Izzy on the um, news of the coming of your first baby. Congratulations. Well, thank you for that. It, it, it certainly is such a, an honor, um, not only to have been uh, elected to represent the community for two years, but the, to then have the confidence uh, uh, of my constituents to reelect uh, and send me back down here for another two years is just very heartwarming. Um, and I recognize uh, the honor that it is and appreciate uh, you know, people's uh, faith in myself and in my team. Uh, and in, in regards to Izzy uh, and, and myself, we just feel very blessed uh, and very excited for uh, you know, 2021, and, and you know, we're expecting uh, to have a, a little golden in uh, sometime in May. A baby golden, very fit, very fitting. So, with that, um, it sounds like baby golden is going to come at about the time that we're we're getting toward uh, helping vaccinate. Um, and so, we're going to be welcoming the baby into hopefully a more friendly world where COVID isn't so much of a threat. But given all of that, given the wonderful things that happened to you in 2020. 2020 has also been a very difficult year for your constituents for obvious reasons with COVID-19 and both the health and economic impacts and just the cultural and societal impacts that have come with it. What are your reflections on the year that almost was? Well, I think that an important um, part of this job and of leadership um, in any organization at any moment is um, knowing um, what you can achieve um, and therefore where to focus your limited priorities which everyone has uh, you know some fencing around uh, you know what what they have a capacity to take on and get done um, and you know also knowing uh, when you need to have the flexibility to pivot your focus and, and your goals and I would say that my biggest observation about 2020 was this uh, unexpected 
a rather sudden challenge in this emerging uh, virus and global pandemic, which has come home to the United States of America. Um, and as you noted, has made such a big impact, mostly a negative one, although we can search for silver lining uh, in any situation uh, on the people that I represent. And uh, I have talked at length to my staff about how this has created um, an opportunity for what I have described as purposeful work. Um, a greater sense of clarity about where our focus needs to be in, in regards to what we're doing here in Washington and what we're doing back home in our district offices in the second district. Um, and this is an opportunity to uh, really keep the focus on um, serving our constituents. Uh, my staff in Maine are very focused on this, the constituent services, listening to people, identifying what the greatest challenges and risks are in, in doing what we can as well in Washington to steer this place in the direction of um, meeting those needs as best we can, uh, which has been an ongoing conversation throughout 2020, uh, particularly as some of the CARES Act assistance is um, you know, drying up and going away. I think you'll have noticed that for the last six months, I've really been sounding the alarm bells about a lack of progress towards compromise to keep, um, you know, Washington moving towards meeting the needs of my constituents and I think of the American people. And it feels today like we're getting closer to that sort of deal, which could at least at this moment help us through the winter. Um, and I think that will probably inform the next parts of our conversation in regards to what I'm thinking about 2021. So let's pivot to 2021. And you did mention compromise um, in, in that. And you've really become known in your first term in Congress as somebody who really values compromise and who seeks to work across the aisle, which is really the longstanding tradition for some of Maine's most notable politicians. How do you take that um, and take the work that you and your staff are doing and, and the needs of the second district and prioritize for 2021 when there seems to be so many demands? There also seems to be a hyper-partisan environment in which you're working. So how, how do you focus and move forward and prioritize yeah this is uh you know look i'm i am often learning uh you know uh, alongside my staff and my constituents um you know i haven't been an elected official uh for very long uh i was elected to the state legislature in 2014 uh, but representing an entire congressional district is uh, a much bigger endeavor uh so uh, that's one thing that i think is important is like being um, you know, willing to recognize uh, that I've still got plenty to learn um, and will for a long time. Um, you know, as I think about some of my um, you know, colleagues uh, in the main delegation, uh, they have been uh, at this for a long time. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to continue to strive to do the best I can uh, while having that open, um, you know, approach to recognizing that I'm in a, you know, growth phase as well um, as a representative in the, the number one goal is to continue to reach towards being the best representative I can be for my constituents. Uh, that is a, a big goal. Um, in, in regards to compromise, I, you know, people want to talk about it like it is, um, you know, some kind of political decision in regards to, you know, if you want to be a, um, you know, progressive or conservative or a, you know, centrist. I don't think about it that way. I think about it as just a reality. Um, uh, a necessary, uh, you know, part of accomplishing things for your constituents, uh, which is why I'm here. I don't want to ever get untethered from that, which is that my, my objective at every moment is to try and engage what can I deliver in a positive sense that's going to make a real difference for communities and constituents that I represent. And so my, my core belief is that compromise is necessary um, to, to do that and to keep the focus appropriately on what can we do this month? What can we do this year and in the next two years to leave my constituents in a better place uh, than they were at the beginning? Um, you know, certainly a lot of challenges politically, uh, but we're up for them. And uh, we have a, a strong delegation in Senators Collins and King, uh, myself uh, and Congresswoman Pingree. Uh, in the first congressional district. And so I don't feel like I need to be uh, all things for, on every issue. Um, each of us has an ability to bring, um, you know, our experience levels, our different backgrounds and our kind of, um, you know, policy interest and expertise to working together um, to 
build a good team. And that's something that I'm really focused on too, is, is how can we continue to build that relationship um, as we're all uh, in this role together uh, with every passing year? How can we be a stronger team working together for the good of the people of Maine? One of the things that you noted earlier, you talked about and sort of it was in relation to the CARES Act and, and the need for additional funding and how hard you're working um, across the aisle to, to make that happen. One of the things that I think we're all cognizant of, especially in your rural rim counties in your district, I mean, you do have some more by main standards, urban communities of Lewiston and Bangor and the like, but in the rural rim counties in particular, as whatever even a second round of CARES Act funding might bring to the region, there's both the sort of the cliff after that. And I think combined potentially with the perfect storm of the results of the decennial census from 2020 and some funds, federal funds being lost to rural rim counties in your state, is there anything that you can think of or any, any strategies that you're looking at to help us buffer some of that uh, in, in rural rim counties of Maine? Well, I, I think that the delegate, that, 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 that's a delegation effort, right? Like as we are looking at the development of things like appropriations bills um, or big um, stimulus packages uh, on related to COVID as an example, uh, we're looking forward at, let's say, if Congress is able to do something on infrastructure, we really need to make sure that we're advocating uh, as a team uh, for good policy making that doesn't leave rural communities behind. And, um, you know, Maine is so unique. There are other states like us, but they are a, you know, handful um, where we are just so truly rural. Um, you talked about our more urban areas like Lewiston in our district, uh, you know, 36,000 people. Um, is not even on the map of many other states in regards to uh, a, being a population center. So um, while it is urban to us, um, it's a town um, and you know, not a city. And um, I am constantly trying to you know, help policymakers in Washington better understand uh, the reality uh, of, of, I think, rural policymaking and the importance of, of keeping that focus. Because uh, I, I don't think anyone is trying to specifically leave rural communities uh, behind or fail to deliver you know, meaningful uh, assistance that can help us grow in a positive direction from an economic perspective or quality of life perspective. But often they just kind of fall, I think, um, fly under the radar uh, because we are in a very unique setting. Um, and, and there's only a few other states where we have natural allies in that conversation. So I, I, I think it's just gonna take um, uh, a level of vigilance and focus uh, for my office to make progress on this and just constantly, we wanna be like the rural team uh, in, the, in the House Democratic Commons, uh, conference, uh, Caucus conversation. Um, if, if people are uh, kind of uh, pegging me uh, in my brand as, well, he's the guy that's always talking about rural communities, then that will be a good thing. Um, speaking of how, how you serve these rural communities, you talked earlier about the priorities that you and your staff set. I think, um, first of all, it's a, your, your staff is phenomenal uh, throughout the state of Maine here in Aroostook County with Barb Hazlett, who's a veteran staffer of, of members of a congressional delegation, Kim Rohn as well. Um, we work with them in community action across the state quite frequently um, doing constituent service work. They reach out to us. We reach out to them. We're consistently in meetings together. So they do a really great job of not only representing you, but um, working for uh, the people of the second district and um, just your thoughts about um, the importance of that relationship, the importance of the programs and what community action is able to bring to bear in the state. Oh, it's so important. Uh, you know, the relationship building, uh, you know, between a congressional office and organizations like yours is, is key to our common success and uh, the, you know, being best situated to making a difference for our communities. Um, you know, I only have so many staff uh, that is set in law by statute. Um, so it's not like I can grow my capacity. Um, and I have a, a great staff, as you've noted. I, I am so appreciative of them uh, and thankful uh, for their focus on my constituents. And uh, when we are able to establish a strong relationship with uh, an organization like Aroostook County Action, uh, it, it actually helps us do our job better. Uh, and I hope that you find that we are bringing a level of service to you and your organization that helps you better serve our common constituents. Uh, 
you know, as I think about the previous question too, uh, this is really important. A, a lot of what I strive to make sure my myself and my staff, uh, my office is doing is showing up, um, coming to places like Aroostook County, like Piscataquis County, um, you know, Washington County, getting out there into the areas where people often uh, don't go, uh, but should. Uh, and, and I think we've done a good job of that. You can always do better um, and be more present. And uh, uh, part of my goal is to try and drag people from Washington out there too. Uh, I have uh, successfully brought uh, some political appointees of the Trump administration to uh, Madison, Maine, as, as an example, uh, to see some potential economic development projects. And um, I want to um, help be your advocate and my constituents advocate to government uh, to places like the Small Business Administration, uh, to the IRS, to uh, the USDA, and not only making sure that, um, you know, we're doing the constituent services that help you get um, your needs met, but also forcing them to be accountable to you and to show up, uh, in particular in those rural counties where they often don't. You, um, you talk about the, the work in the rural counties. That's great, a great passion of yours. And we certainly appreciate that. Is, and, and I want to just extend to you that we do have a standing invitation. We would love to welcome you at any time when it's safe for you to come and, and visit Aroostook County post-COVID. Um, the uh, work that we do um, and, and we connect with your staff on regularly, um, you know, not only helps individuals in crisis, as you know, but we're helping individuals um, gain stability, gain self-sufficiency. Um, that work, uh, especially coming out of a pandemic, I think is going to be more important. We've seen a swell in, in individuals who have never turned to community action before for help. And you've been very both attentive and listening uh, and, and connecting with us virtually in this case, um, as it has been necessary. Um, to hear what those needs are. What is your um, sort of report card on how things are in the state of Maine right now? And, and I know there's a lot of need and there's a lot of crises, but are, how, are, how are your constituents holding together right now? I think that this is a challenging time. Um, it, you know, it, it's always a challenge. Uh, unfortunately, in, in my life, um, you know, and, and in particular, since I got involved in politics, I think um, the, the trend for rural communities, um, economically in particular, and in just in quality of life and availability of, you know, services. That's just like, for instance, access to healthcare and hospitals is, has been a, a tough one, right? Um, this has been an ongoing struggle and a trend that I think we need to all work together to try and, and reverse. Um, and so I, I feel a lot of hope, uh, you know, just, I don't want to sound too negative, um, you know, and, and look, people are committed to living uh, in, in rural communities and in Maine, I think, because we, we love it. Um, it's either a part of who we are or people are moving out there because they want to have some of that quality of life and that freedom and independence that comes, uh, I think, with getting out of urban centers. Uh, and, and Maine is just such a beautiful place. So a big part of my focus is, is on how do we support resiliency in individuals and in communities um, so that we can weather the tough times uh, while preserving uh, the, the way of life that we want uh, and obviously hopefully being in a position to grow economically and in regards to uh, opportunity. Um, that's, that's the goal. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I think it has been on a negative trend line, but I, I know we can reverse uh, that. I have really stayed focused in my first two years on our kind of traditional um, industries and economic drivers like uh, the forestry industry, logging uh, as an example, our paper mills, um, working with the University of Maine on trying to make investments in the future. Um, I don't want to give up on what we're doing, but rather strengthen uh, our readiness for uh, the decades to come. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of possibilities there. Uh, I don't feel any different about uh, farming. Um, especially as we see a lot more smaller farms, I think, um, you know, and younger farmers uh, showing up in, in, in Maine. Um, and um, in uh, the, the fishing industry uh, as well. And I, I think we've got a good foundation and that's why I'm hopeful for the future. And, and we're just gonna continue to uh, work towards uh, that stronger economic future that I think is very possible, but it, it certainly takes an entire community to make it, make it happen. And uh, I think a big part of my goal is being your advocate to government to assist um, in the development of that type of 
resiliency in rural communities so that we can continue to live there, you know, for generations and, and, and be, um, you know, uh, feel like our basic needs in life are being met. And where, from your perspective, I think to borrow a phrase from uh, President-elect Biden at this point, what do you see as community action's role in that effort to build back better? Uh, I think the, the, the first step has got to be um, demanding to be heard by the Biden administration. They can say that they want to prioritize rural America, which they have said. Um, the first step in proving that focus, in my opinion, is they need to be all ears. Uh, and they need to get out there, like I said, show up and ask questions and listen. Uh, less talking, more listening uh, in the early parts of this administration is how I think I will gauge their level of commitment to uh, focusing on rural communities like ours. And I, 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 I intend to uh, let them know that's my opinion. And I hope that uh, ACAP and others would join me in that effort. Absolutely. And, and, and what do you see or how importantly do you see the role of ACAP and other community action agencies in this effort? I think communicating clearly what the reality on the ground is and, and, and communicating effectively what the people you serve are facing in regards to challenges, but also what they want and believe they need to be that resilient individual uh, or community to take it to the next step, which is moving towards positive economic growth, um, you know, expanding opportunity for rural uh, communities. And uh, it's often I find in Washington, people, um, are striving to figure that out for themselves without actually talking to the people that are like the subject matter of their conversation, which is a huge mistake. Um, and so I think that uh, our goal needs to be uh, to be that voice on behalf of the people that we represent. Great. And so the last question we're asking all of our main leaders in this uh, interview series is to tell us that you've got a lot happening in 2021 and just the arrival of the baby in May alone is going to be huge for your family. Um, but what are you resolving in 2021? Oh, well, certainly uh, resolving to just be prepared to be the, the uh, most supportive, uh, you know, best uh, dad that I can be uh, alongside Izzy uh, in a personal uh, sense. That seems like the most uh, important uh, resolution I could make for 2021. Um, this will be our first kid, so we're certainly going to be, you know, learning together. Uh, literally all three of us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, professionally, I, I think just to keep it, you know, simple and at like a uh, micro level, um, continuing to strive every day uh, to uh, help myself and my team become more efficient um, and more accessible uh, in the goal being to continue to uh, grow uh, professionally as a team and for myself as an individual to be the very best representative that I can be for every one of my constituents and every one of my uh, communities. And um, I, I take that very seriously um, and I don't expect perfection. And I don't think you all should either. Um, a, a part of being uh, one of the best representatives, uh, I think implies a willingness to accept critique uh, and constructive criticism and to pull people in even when they are might not you know be uh, you know 100% uh, on your time from a, uh, on your team from a political perspective as a community we're on the same team uh, and that's the goal and and just one last question do you know what the team golden's going to have is it a baby boy or a baby girl have you announced that or do you know <laughs> uh, you know we haven't made like a big public announcement um you know, and, and that being said, we're also, um, you know, on a, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis uh, telling people, uh, but, you know, I'm trying to, uh, you know, avoid, uh, you know, we don't want like tweet storms from the press and all that stuff. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're excited to share uh, those types of details with everyone in our community. Um, and, and uh, you know, when, when we're in a different venue, uh, either you and I, uh, or your staff or my constituents, I'm happy to share that, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold it back in, the, in this case. I can respect that. I thought I might get an exclusive on that one, Congressman. <laughs> but congratulations nonetheless, and we are so, um, so happy for you and Izzy. That's going to be a, a wonderful arrival. And um, gosh, you welcome to the world of juggling it all as a, as a, as a hardworking parent. <laughs> so 
All right. Well, with that, I want to thank you for the time that you have dedicated from your uh, DC office uh, to speak with the people of Aroostook County and all who view this webisode of ACAP today and for all of your generous support and most importantly for the uh, work that you do in Washington and the approach that you do it from consensus, compromise and bipartisanship. I think all of us in the second district and throughout the state of Maine can be proud of that. So well, thank, thank you. you. And I want to thank you and, and all of your staff for your hard work and, and your commitment. Um, I think you're as resolved as I uh, and my staff are uh, to doing the best you can, um, committed to, to growth as an organization uh, in, in delivering that, that assistance uh, to the people that, that need it um, and to listening. Uh, and, and as I've said, we've been blessed with purposeful work. Um, that's always the truth, but it isn't it even more so at a challenging time uh, like this uh, in regards to the, the pandemic uh, and all the economic uh, challenges and quality of life challenges that it's presented. So um, on the one hand, I wanna thank you um, and, and also just you know remind us all uh, how fortunate we are to be in a position to try and make a difference. Indeed we are, and we'll look forward to seeing the three-dimensional version of you when it's safe for you to uh, travel back to the county and come up for a visit. We look forward to that day, and again, thank you very much for your time. No, thank you. Take care. And that concludes our interview with Congressman Jared Golden. We again thank him and all of our main leaders who have joined us in this main leaders conversation series as part of the ACAP Today ongoing broadcast. Next week, we conclude our main leaders conversation series with the first week of the new year, our January 4th or week of January 4th webisode. We'll feature Maine Governor Janet Mills as we wrap up again the main leaders conversation series. But before we leave you this week, we want to remind you to indeed reach out to us if we can be of any assistance to you, including to help you navigate what services you may or may not be aware are out there for you right now as we continue to suffer the effects of the pandemic, economic, and other wise. So please do contact us. 764-3721 is our number and info at acap-me.org is an email address, a general email address that you can reach us at. You can also check out our website acap-me.org. Also check us out on Facebook. Our development and communications team does a great job keeping people up to date on the latest information on Facebook. So always feel free to stay tuned to that. We're also now on Twitter. So please do check out our Twitter handle there, if you will. And we also have our YouTube channel where you can and view past broadcasts of ACAP today and some other great stuff that our team are putting on in a remote learning environment. And finally, before we leave you today, as we do each week, we share with you our snapshot of the week and we uh, continue our celebrating milestone employee uh, series. Uh, we are celebrating Randy Rattray this week, who is celebrating 40 years of service in 2020 to the Aroostook County Action Program, an incredible four decades uh, by Randy. Randy has always been a part of our housing team here at the agency. He currently leads our housing team and does a great job doing so. Randy shares with us that he has many great memories working for the agency over the past four decades and that he loves in particular that the agency renovated the Gouldville School in Presque Isle and that he was lucky enough to be a part of that project uh, whereby ACAP replaced all of the windows and updated the exterior trim on the building and did a lot of work on the inside as well. As he passes that building, he always has a smile on his face because both he and his daughter, Kate, attended Gouldville School. So he's glad it's been saved and considers it a landmark in Presque Isle. And we too, Randy, are happy that both that landmark is here and you yourself are here with us at this agency, uh, making life better for people across Aroostook County. So Randy Rattray, thank you to you for your four decades, 40 years of service to the Aroostook County Action Program. And with that, that's this week's edition of ACAP Today. Again, we'll be back next week with Governor Janet Mills to conclude our main leaders conversation series. Until then, the happiest of New Year's to you as we celebrate New Year's Day this Friday, and we look forward to seeing you next in 2021.